and today we're going to take a pretty serious look at our realm. We're going to examine redesignated nations and the things that were left behind. This will take us to a beautiful hotel in Canada, the Prague Castle in the Czech Republic, and the Parliament Building once again in Bucharest, Romania, just to name a few. Welcome. What is this building, and where are we? This monstrosity of a castle and these features what may almost look kind of eerie in the evil is a typical style of the old world and what is the designation for this building this monster of a building who would build such a structure and for what purpose this beautiful roof and this electrical tech and again a castle and these types of columns and what was the purpose mostly constructed of brick but also seeming to be some other type of block or stone back here as well and was this building even complete was it awaiting an ornate facade over the top some sort of white cement plastering perhaps similar to what we see at world's fairs and this wall just this wall alone an impressive feat of engineering and what is this place and where are we absolutely superb and skilled architecture that we're going to explore today what time period and what stories do they have for us? And here for a moment, we'll review the narrative associated with this Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City, Canada. The chateau was built by the Canadian Pacific Railway Company. And here we can see the reaches of this particular company. And it's one of the first completed Grand Railway Hotels, which are a series of railway hotels across the country, each a local and national landmark, and most of which are icons of Canadian history and architecture. Some are considered to be the Grand Hotels of the British Empire. Each hotel was originally built by the Canadian Railway Companies. And here we're told this hotel was opened in 1893. The building was designated a National Historic Site of Canada merely in 1981. 1893, built by a railway company as a hotel. And what kind of luxury are we seeing exhibited by this railway company? What kind of time period are we talking about? Absolutely over the top for that time period. And even most certainly today, we may have a hotel of this grandeur in today's day and age, but not made of this fine quality, made of the absolute cheapest quality and craftsmanship. At best, only replicating this style only the faintest husk remaining. And we have discussed not only whether the rail lines were simply inherited already here, part of these glorious cities connecting them, and we simply clean them up, in many cases simply unearthed the mud deposit on top of them, and give credit to made-up characters in a false historical narrative. And when we see this series of hotels along the railway in this time period, it only adds to the illegitimacy of our history. And take two, Parliament building in Bucharest, Romania. 
I just laid down a segment and completely lost it. So I wanted to take us back to this Bucharest palace here. And again, this palace was built in 1984. 1984 and looking much older and very beautiful. And how could this have been hidden? Seeming like an old world architecture and yet this narrative being written as recently as 1984. And the only way I can conceive that this could be done is by designating this country as a communist country and just really putting the lid on all internal affairs until a narrative of a better nature could be written. And here we see all the mud flood windows. And this being very similar to what we see in China. China being also a communist nation and we see these very same buildings all throughout China. China of course being a Tartarian hub on the older maps and I think we're seeing something very similar here. I've never seen the palace here before and it's not just this palace. I mean if we look at this building just due south of the palace equally as impressive and definitely these are older buildings and to give us a date of construction of 1984 is a complete and ridiculous insult and very fascinating to have discovered this hidden gem of a city and surely in this time period there must be some viewers that were around and did you see any construction go on in 1984 or was there something here as it appears there was inconceivable to me and really seeming as if it's missing a lot much has been removed as far as perhaps domes and various ornamental features and antiquitech and very remarkable and again the world's largest parliamentary building very amazing and really what this parliament building reminds me of is a hotel this does not seem like something built in 1984 for a communist party this seems like a grand hotel and really seeming quite vacant even in present times very weathered and equally interesting is this ring of anomalous features that can be downloaded on colmgibneysstarfort.org and these are all kind of like plug holes and very interesting features and we've looked at these in other videos and I'll try to see if I can't find a good example here's a few of them and these are just very strange plug holes and what seem to be access to subterranean passageways and seeming unimpressive from the air but when we actually get a picture of the face this is what we're dealing with and these sit below ground level and are actually access to subterranean realms. And here we see what looks like a date, perhaps? And very fascinating. Could these have been subway tunnels or just entirely buildings that are in disuse and ground level is now up here, oftentimes trees and grass growing on them. And if I had one of these near my location, I would most certainly try to get in. But very interesting that this ring exists all around this center point of what seems like a very advanced Romania. And here we can see an excellent one as well. Plug holes and something clearly buried under here. 
And if we have a little look, what do they show us? Here we go. Very, very intricate and beautiful brickwork. And here we go, just trees and grass and from the air seeming like nothing spectacular. And yet this is absolutely spectacular. And what is really going on here? I would love to explore this right now. And definitely we'll put a little pin here so we can revisit this in the future. And very interesting. I'd like to explore all of these points. But for now, we'll move on. Totally depressed is what I am. This will be the third time trying to record this segment. And I'm going to try to keep it under five minutes. But a lot of interesting things in those segments. Talking about all the canals and railways found throughout our realm. And what kind of people may have created all these amazing structures. And how when looking at these parliament buildings and these castles and hotels and cathedrals, they all seem so similar. As we can see in this picture here, this is the Prague Castle. And the Prague Castle could easily be a cathedral, just as remarkable and beautiful as any cathedral in the world. And why call this one a castle? And when looking at the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec, this could have easily been a parliament building. And perhaps there was an excess of suitable buildings for such a purpose. And so this becomes hotel. Hotel built in one year. Absolutely amazing to even conceive of building something like this in one year in any time period with modern or primitive equipment. Just unreasonable. But not to digress too much, going back to the people and who may have built such buildings. Clearly struggling with the false historical narrative to tell us this was built in one year, having to squeeze it in between certain events to not arouse crossovers in the timeline. And what kind of people could have built this? Well, there is a clue. You know, when I talk about Tartaria being the ancient civilization, well, our clue is that old maps show this people, whereas in our modern history, there's not a mention of them. And so this becomes a red flag. This becomes our people until proven otherwise. And in this case, I wanted to show these great books, and many of you have seen these giant books, full modern human-sized books. And I was not aware where these books were found until last night. And these were found in the Prague Castle. And again, until proven wrong, it would be safe to assume that a giant castle with giant books were built by a giant people. What reason would there be to produce such books? Especially looking so old and tattered like these ones. Not even some novelty book that someone would print for almost an amusing purpose. But there are entire libraries of these books in weathered condition, tattered corners, worn pages, bookmarked. And today I just want to scratch the surface. Perhaps this is a first for some of you. But what I would really like is to get into reading some of these books and what clues have been left for us about this ancient people, about this previous civilization that seems to dwarf us in their understanding and abilities in every way. And this little communist palace of the parliament is truly some sort of rabbit hole. Again, I'm sucked back into it. The palace was ordered to be built by Nikolai, who lived from 1918 to 1989. It seems that with his death, there was a revolution in Romania in December of 1989. Originally designed by 700 architects, and again constructed over a period of 13 years. So this man, Nikolai, was a dictator 
of communist Romania in which a personality cult of political worship and adoration was noticeably increased for him and his family. And how do we create such a thing? Such a political worship. We create such a situation through education, similar to what we see in North Korea. The building is comprised of 23 sections featuring the two houses of parliament, the senate, the chamber of deputies, along with three museums, international conference center, the museum of contemporary art, and many more. After the Romanian Revolution, the Museum of Communism, originally named the House of the Republic, later renamed the People's House. And this is the most fascinating part. Even so, with all these museums and different functions, 70% of the building still remains empty. The Parliament is valued at $3.4 billion dollars making it the most expensive administrative building in the world. Completely ridiculous. Three billion dollars and 70% remains empty. Now this is excellent actually, because we've often asked what the modern price tag of these buildings would be. The World's Fair buildings, oftentimes we're given a very small price tag and it's a little harder to wrap our heads around it because the construction dates may be in the early 1900s, late 1800s. But here, giving us such a late construction date, such a late inheritance for this building, that we actually get a pretty good estimate on a construction cost of such a glorious old world building in modern times. The cost of heating and electric use exceeds six million dollars per year. This is compared to powering a medium-sized city. And for what? Again, 70% of the building remains empty. And moving on. And I'm currently watching the new Earth video that she's recently put out. Armageddon, my visions from the future, and very fascinating, I am a fan of the New Earth channel, and what she's talking about is actually quite correct. What we've seen unfold with this recent scare has shown us many things, and for me one of the most important things is who is awake and who is asleep, and I got in many fights with friends and family over this situation and questioned my motives for fighting. At times I felt I was wrong and should just be peaceful and have a nice relationship with these people. And other times I felt justified for fighting and felt it was my duty to wake these people up and how these people were in danger through their blindness and susceptible to some sort of situation similar to what is spoken of in the Bible being marked with something and losing one soul and what do we see in recent times Bill Gates very excited to vaccinate everyone with a chip inside of the vaccine gathering and collecting data and anybody who is asleep is in danger of marching right into some sort of office or even a tent and putting out their arm ready to be injected with anything at all and a lot coming out about these false viruses and the patents on them and a virus should be the least of our concerns when we begin to look at the solutions that the controllers have for us and I like to think that the more greedy they get and the more they continue to chip away at human liberties, the more people will wake up. And I'm still not sure what the correct solution is. Perhaps not fighting with our loved ones, but perhaps use this energy to wake others up. Channel your passion in other ways. 
and perhaps it'll make its way back to those that you do care about. And at the very least, or even better, you may wake up enough people in which a mass majority can stop voluntarily complying with this corrupt system that has no authority over us. And we can begin to live free and actually move forward as a people, as one. So that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed, and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.